Welcome into another special edition of the Fast Lane. Trey Lyle here with you. I am joined once again to preview another game in ODU football. This time they're taking on Liberty. Joined by ODU Sports.com's Harry Minium Jr. Harry, how are you doing? And uh, good to see you. Uh, obviously, ODU got the big win the last time we talked over uh, Virginia Tech, and they're off to a, a pretty good start this season. They're one. I think one kickoff return away from being three and one, had they not allowed the long kickoff return against DVA, I don't think UVA would have come back, but you, you got to give UVA credit. They drove right down the field in 61 seconds. Uh, and that was a tough loss. So they, they, they come back and beat Ar- Arkansas state is a good team, by the way, they lost to Ohio state and to Memphis. And um, the game with Memphis was close. That's a good football team. They're going to win a lot of games and to be come back and beat Arkansas state was a, a good win for this program. How is the mood around the team? Obviously, last year, the start was not that great. You, we talked about last time we talked the five straight wins the end of the last season to make the bowl game. But, you know, the, they're off to a two and two start. Obviously, that big win opening night against Virginia Tech. You, you feel like you were very competitive against UVA and you obviously uh, get the win last week against Arkansas State. How does this team feel as it's, you know, almost into the heart of Sunbelt play, which is appearing to be just a, a very deep conference. Uh, they feel pretty confident right now. They uh, would love to go into they, – they're off next week, going to the bye and finish a non-conference season three and two. Um, obviously, Liberty is uh, – I think Liberty is – could be the best team they played to date. Um, uh, I personally, I think East Carolina is the best team in Old Dominion has played to date, and they lost last week, uh, which is amazing, which tells you a lot about college football. Anyone can beat anyone. Just ask App State about that um, or Texas A&M, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, but they're feeling pretty good about themselves. So the one thing they do is they they have the, what they call the one and no mentality, meaning they just focus on this week. And they they did it. That's, that's why they were able to focus and win their last five games of the season last year because they just – they focus on the here and now. Uh, Coach Ricky Ronnie's done a great job of getting him to do that. In kind of overlying theme of this game, or at least what I feel like any time an ODU plays Liberty or you throw JMU into the mix, is that kind of distinguishes themselves as the third program in the state. You know, a, a program that can compete with the two big boys, if you want to call them, in, in Virginia Tech and Virginia, but also kind of in terms of like, hey, this is the best let's say best group of five team in the state. How important are these kind of games, you know, just to kind of establish yourself as a, a premier team in the state of Virginia when it comes to college football? It's a big game because Odie and Liberty recruit against each other, obviously. So that, that makes it a big game. It's a big game too, because the last two times uh, Old Dominion played Liberty, they, uh, they hung quite a big number on ODU. And, um, you know, when talking to players and coaches this week, they're not, um, they didn't talk much about that, but you know that's in the back of their minds that you know Old Dominion got crushed in two games last year, not really crushed, but beaten badly, and that was Wake Forest and Liberty, and um, so you know they're remembering that. And um, obviously Liberty had a great team last year; they have a great team this year. I've I've seen three of Liberty's games. The game against Wake Forest was just unbelievable. They I should have won that game, um, which tells you just how good they are. That's a great football team. Although it all depends on what quarterback is going to show up Saturday, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Caden Solter comes back at practice this week. And, you know, obviously the injury to Charlie Brewer at the start of the year. And Solter has kind of established himself as as the number one at this point. Then last week they go with a mixture of Jonathan Bennett and Nate Ham- Hampton. Um, this coaching staff basically has to get ready for three quarterbacks, it appears. How big of a challenge is that? And um, what is the coaching staff talked about, you know, when it comes to facing these quarterbacks, obviously, you know, you'd say Keaton Salter's the best in terms of he has really good mobility and a really good arm talent. Nate Hampton's probably just more of a direct runner. Well, Jonathan Bidden is just your your traditional passer kind of quarterback. They haven't really spoken a lot about having to deal with the quarterbacks per se. Uh, one, of, one of their goals this week is to not, you know, not give up any explosive plays, you know, not give up any – 30, 40 yard down passes. So um, that's that killed Old Dominion last year when they were in Lynchburg. And uh, that, that's a momentum killer when you give up something like that. That's, I mean, Old Dominion completed a 70, 70 yard pass last week and boom, the momentum's right back in their 
in their hands. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that they've talked about. Obviously, the, the talent at the skill position for Liberty Day Day Hunter is off to a really good start. Had his first 100 yard game last week against Akron. And then, you know, you, you throw in Demario Douglas, Caleb Sneed. The, the talent, you know, you could argue outside of Virginia is maybe the best they've fade, played so far this season from a skill position point of view. What type of challenge is, is the defense kind of focusing on? You talked about limiting explosive plays, but there there's a lot of skill in, in that Liberty offense. There is a ODU's defense is um, I don't know how many turnovers they've created over the years, it's, it's, but they had four last week, and uh, I think they they forced three fumbles against UVA. They have been ODU's offense's best friend. Uh, seven different players had sacks last week um, against Arkansas State. So this defense likes they like to disrupt things. They will blitz. Um, when you least expect it, and um, they're really good against the run. They, they, the, the defensive line here is is big, and it's really good, and they're aggressive. Um, and, they, of course, they have Jason Henderson, a linebacker, who's the nation's leading tackler. Um, the defense is, so far this season, defense has been ODU's strength, um, and they've been good. They've been really good against the running game. So that will be a great matchup to see if uh, – if, if, Liberty can run like they did against Acker. And the, the thing I noticed about some of the coverage is they were so disappointed that, you know, they, they didn't, you know, meet the spread, you know, that they almost like Akron was almost a loss. And, um, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, Akron is not that great a team, but they won, you know. And as Ricky Ronnie says, I've never had a bad win. So, <laughs> excuse me, I've never had an ugly win. They're all beautiful if you win. So. Um, I think a I think a letdown was inevitable after the Wake Forest game, and uh, you know it's good they got the one good for them that they got the win. Throw in they they had their third and fourth string quarterback play that game. Uh, moving to the other side of the ball, Hayden Wolf off to a really good start. You know, nine hundred fifty four yards, seven touchdowns, and the key is one interception. Obviously, Ali Jennings, the transfer from West Virginia, coming in is the second you know second in the nation in receiving yards. He's been pretty really good this year how has this offense you know continue to build off of last season and and as in looked really good to start the year well the the thing this offense hasn't done is really they haven't been able to sustain drives and that has forced the defense to be on the field um you too many plays in too many minutes you know it, against gva i think they they drove and scored for their last touchdown and i like you know 43 seconds or something like that. That's how they scored twice against Virginia Tech. Um, they haven't gotten their running game going. And um, in, in order in order for this team to continue to, to win in the Sun Belt, they've got to get the running game open. And they, um, Kevin Reiner, the offensive coordinator, he did some creative things in the second half against Arkansas State. They got the running game going and, um, you know, got the offense moving. And I would expect to see more of that. Uh, they've, they've just been, you know, I think you, you have certain offense and sometimes the personnel doesn't fit that offense or sometimes, as Ricky Ronnie says, there are times when, you know, one guy's missing a block or one guy misses an assignment and it just blows the play up and they just haven't, they just haven't put that complete game together yet running the ball. They ran the ball better against Arkansas State than, they, than, they've, um, than they've done in the previous couple of games, but they've got to get the running game going this season. A little big, question, big picture question for you. This is going to be ODU's third game against a team in the Commonwealth. They have one more, obviously, uh, with in-conference opponent, James Madison. How important is it for this coaching staff who's still, you know, laying the foundation, if you want to say, of their program uh, to have all these big games in the, with in-state opponents and and to really, you know, especially the ones at home, if they, go th- they can go 3-0 and against the, their home opponents, that would be probably – a really big accomplishment for this team. It would. They, they were, um, you know, these, these non-conference games were scheduled long before ODU decided to join the Sun Belt. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not you know, I don't want to hurt any, anyone's feelings here, but obviously the Sun Belt is a much better league than Conference USA. It's much more difficult. Um, they have a, they, they're Texas facing a much more. Yes. And Notre Dame. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and Nebraska. Yes. Um and North Carolina, which was lucky, just lucky to beat App State and Georgia State. They were just lucky. Uh, they could have lost both. Um, 
So it's a really good league. And, uh, you know, so the non-conference schedule probably a bit too strong this year, if you know what I mean. You know, ideally they like to have, uh, you know, one or two group, uh, one or two power fives and um, a group of five and then an FCS school. And they just, they don't have room on their schedule for the next few years for an FCS team. Um, so, you know, this is, it's been a very grueling non-conference schedule for them. Um, but th on the other hand, Ricky Ronnie says he loves the chance to play all four FBS schools uh, in the state. He thinks that's really cool. You know, if, if Old Dominion was to finish three and one and Virginia um, loses to Virginia Tech, are we the best in the state? Who knows? We could claim that, you know, but who knows? So, and by the way, JM, JMU looks pretty good right now, don't they? You know, they do as well. But ODU uh, could maybe be the only bowl team out of the the Commonwealth. I guess in Liberty could be the only two bowl teams. Uh, the way that uh, you know, depending on how things shake out, because JMU is ineligible for the postseason. So, how about that? Yeah, someone had them in the college. You know. Um, one of these national writers had JMU as the, you know, here, let's do a 12 team playoff for this season and just see what it would look like. And they had JMU there. And I, I wanted to tweet them and said, Hey, JMU can't play in the postseason, but I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Not going to rain on their parade. Let them, you know, let them have their day in the sun. And be an the, undefeated team that doesn't make their conference championship. Yeah. You know, I believe it was Georgia Southern their first year or second year in, in the, uh, some belted, I think went eight and three and couldn't go to a bowl game. And that was tough. That's tough. But, you know, everyone who moves up has to go through it. OD went through two years of no bowl game. Um, that was hard. Um, JMU was able, is going to be able to do it in one year, which I think really helps their program. It, it's tough to recruit when you say, Hey, come play for us in the next two years, you know, you're not going anywhere. So, um, it's a little easier to recruit when you you know you just you're going to be out one year. Looking at this game now, uh, the spread it's actually a, a relatively close spread, I believe. Uh, Liberty a three and a half point favorite over under forty two and a half. Uh, you gave me a prediction last time. Uh, you do you have one uh, once again? And you were right actually. So uh, you might you might go two for two. Um, well, a lot depends on the weather. You know, uh, it's. Right now, the uh, weatherman is predicting, um, you know, the rain rain will have stopped by game time and winds will be 5 to 10 miles per hour, which will allow, I think, ODU to pass the ball. I think that helps ODU. If, if we're in a blinding rainstorm, that helps Liberty because Liberty runs the ball better than ODU. But, um, so I'm going to say ODU 24, Liberty 21. 24-21. There you have it. Uh well, Harry, can uh, how can Flames fans connect with you? Maybe learn more about this ODU squad before uh, before kickoff. Uh, go to odusports.com and then uh, go down to it says Max for the Minium. It's uh, just below the picture there. Click, uh, click on there, and all my stories will pop up. Well, thanks so much for joining me once again to preview uh, another game for the Monarchs. Uh, as always, you can connect with me at Trey Lyle VT or connect with us at Fastlane Edlane. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Thank you so much for listening to this special edition of the Fast Lane.